Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. Now that we're in the year 2020, which is also the new decade, I'm about to review the latest movie from 20th Century Fox and Blue Sky Studios, yeah, under the unit of the Walt Disney Company. <laughs> uh, but it's the same people that gave us the Ice Age films, Horton Hears a Who from Dr. Seuss, the Rio films, and of course, the Peanuts movie called Spies in Disguise, which is a story about a cocky secret agent who accidentally transformed into a pigeon by a young intelligent scientist. Of course, got fired. But together they teamed up to stop an evil cybernetic terrorist from sending all these drones and attacking everyone, including the entire agency in Washington, D.C., so it was up to them, hoping that he'll be able to return to his human form. It's an inspiration to the 2009 CGI animated short film by Lucas Murdell called simply Pigeon Impossible. He has sort of a take on Mission Impossible. <laughs> which was a story about a rogue agent by the name of Walter Beckett, which eventually would become the name of the young scientist. Um... He was just uh, going around, you know, just having a bagel while he was actually assigned to uh, send out the briefcase, which uh, includes, uh, which is a, a multi-million dollar uh, nuclear um, bomb briefcase that they had to set the, the nuclear to, that's going to be sent out at, to um, another country if that's, what they were, if that's what it takes. But then suddenly... Um, he spots a, a pigeon that just wants the bagel. That's all he wants, but accidentally wants up inside the briefcase and and accidentally pressing all these buttons. And he and he's trying to stop him. <laughs> trying to save the city and everything. Yeah. It's a very hilarious short film. Um for those who have seen it, but for those who haven't, uh, check it out. <laughs> I, I think you're gonna have a great laugh here. Maybe more hysterical than ever. <laughs> okay. But, um, hey, I mean, it's best to check this out even before you see the movie. <laughs> um, anyway, it stars Will Smith, who's been having a hectic year uh, with uh, the Aladdin uh, live action remake from Disney, along with uh, Gemini Man, which was going to be a surprising movie, but it turns out to be a disappointment. It was directed by Ann Lee, of course. So I'm just glad to hear that he's, at least he's doing a, a good movie, you know, for a while. Yeah, Tom Holland, of course, um, from all the Spider-Man movies. Well, the last two recent Spider-Man films, plus The Avengers, Infinity War, and Endgame, and Captain America Civil War. Jared Bruno, uh, Rashida Jones uh, from Parks and Recreation. Among other movies and shows, um, at this rate, uh, she was in the movie I Love You Man with Paul Rudd and uh, Jason Segel. Uh, ben Mendelsohn from Ready, Ready Player One, uh, along with Captain Marvel. So if you're familiar with the actor. We have a McIntyre, country music singer, but she was in the movie Tremors. And she was also in the TV series of her own, Reba, that was on the WB, and then later CW, for the end of the series. Um, Rachel Brosnahan, I hope I said it right. Karen Gillian, yes, from Guardians of the Galaxy movies, and, and also um, she was in Avengers uh, Endgame. And of course, the the recent Jumanji sequels. Yeah. DJ um, Kali, um, Macy Oka, Carla Jimenez, Ali Mers, uh, Mark Watson, and Kimberly Brooks. So, it's written by Brad Copeland along with Lloyd Taylor and Cindy Davis, all of which are based on the short film Pigeon Impossible by Lucas Mardell. And it's directed by, in their directorial debuts, 
Troy Kwan and Nick Bruno. The movie begins where we meet the secret agent of HTUV, which stands for Honor, Trust, Unity, and Bowler, named Lance Sterling, played by Will Smith, who is being sent to recover an attack drone from a Japanese arm dealer named Katsu Kimura in Japan. Then a cybernetically enhanced terrorist named Killian, and played by Ben Mendelsohn, had bought it, and Sterling had breaks in against the orders of HTUV director Joy Jenkins, um, played by Reba McIntyre, by defeating Kimura, you know, just using the, his hand, you know, just to knock him out, and attack the rest of the game, which eventually uses uh, one of these strange gadgets, which distracts him by, at this rate, <laughs> a kitty video. Yeah, by shooting all these um, these glitter dust around, <laughs> and so he he managed to escape with the briefcase that contains the drone. And once he finally returns to HTUV headquarters in Washington D.C. to confront um, a socially in-depth MTI graduate and young intelligence scientist uh, Walter Beckett, because of course this is the name you know, based on the short film, um, played by Tom Holland, for equipping non-lethal weapons into his suit. So Walter tries to convince Sterling that there's a more peaceful way to save the world. But eventually he got fired by Sterling because his latest invention was polynamic concealment, as he referred to. Um, of course, we learned that um, yeah, Walter Beckett uh, was actually creating all these gadgets uh, when he was very young, um, especially when his mother, who was a cop named Wendy, uh, played by Rachel Bosnanahan, she just does her duty, you know, e every day, you know. Trying to stop crime and all that, you know, catching on the bad guys and everything. Unfortunately, um, she passed away, and he's all alone with his pigeons that he has, especially uh, <laughs> his um, his girl pigeon as an assistant. Um, so, anyway, um, as we uh, continue to go on with the story. Uh, Sterling discovers that the briefcase was empty and was being confronted by Marcy Kappel, um, voice, uh, played by Rochetta Jones, um, who was a Secret Force agent uh, who revealed the footage of Sterling, when in reality it turns out that the Killian was in disguise as Sterling, yeah, who just... Um, who just left the drone, you know, he stopped uh, all the other guys, and he was being labeled as a traitor. So, then Sterling had to escape from the headquarters, and decided to track down Walter so he could find a better disguise for himself, so that way he can disappear. He went to Walter's home for his invention, trying to find a way to actually, um, find a, a perfect disguise, but it turns out that he accidentally drinks uh, the potion of Walter's latest invention, and that would become, as we speak, a pigeon. <laughs> um, so before Walter was trying to find a way to change him back, uh, Marcy and the rest of, of the agents uh, were chasing him down, so they had to escape as soon as possible, you know, before trouble had to go along. You know, they, of course, you know, Sterling's already having trouble, you know, trying to drive, you know, trying to get inside his car because, of course, he is a pigeon. So they, they always have a hard time trying to get inside and all those other things that were going around. Escaping from them, they, they're about to track down Camara to a resort in Playa de Carmen in Mexico until they find out where his whereabouts are at, which is in Venice, Italy. You know, Sterling is already being <laughs> joining in with another pigeon, 
And apparently he he starts to act like a pigeon too, going around eating all this uh, food that was laying on the floor. Yeah, kind of gross. And I I know uh, Beckett goes around you know feeding you know breadcrumbs. And don't worry, it's gluten free. <laughs> um, so of course Sterling was about to stop um, Kimura, um all alone because he wants to work alone and. But of course, it's getting beat up, and until until Beckett finally um, arrived um, at the resort, and and was ready to stop him and actually save uh, Sterling by actually using one of his gadgets to actually inflated him. <laughs> yeah, so that was pretty funny. So on their way, they went to Venice, Italy. Um, Walter was attempt to make an antidote, uh, hoping that he'll be able to become as normal as he could be, and for that potion alone. But that didn't work out because it failed. Um, then later on, when they finally arrived, uh, Walter was being confronted by the HTUV, who was unaware of Sterling's uh, condition that was happening, only to reveal that that Marcy knows about. Uh, Wendy, you know, which happens to be, of course, you know, Walter's mother, and and suddenly the drone distracts um, her and HTUVs and allows uh, Walter and Sterling to escape, and they're trying to continue to go on to go after Killian before he starts to form his own plan was to actually wipe out the entire agency at the headquarters and even though Sterling wants to work alone to stop this villain it was actually up to Walter to actually join in to help along with his uh, birds and his pigeons um, and of course Marcy joins in for the ride when he found out the truth I mean you know joining in with the rest of the agents and everything that they could finally um, defeat uh, Killian and, and then of course hoping for the, the right antidote that he was given that yes he will be back to normal and he will of course the motto of the story here was that you know working as a team is very important you know so that way they can help out and be able to stop you know, all the the killings that's happening to innocent people and that way they can live peacefully together you know without any revenge or anything I mean that's what Walter really wanted you know I mean that's exactly the value importance of them all and it's true it's a very interesting story um, I, I love the idea that they went for this uh, route where you know, you had to have a, a James Bond-like character, you know, as a secret agent, but then wants to be in disguise as a, a bird. And, but of course, Vince just goes completely wrong just when he was trying to stop uh, a, uh, a evil, a nasty villain who, um, of course, disguises himself as a secret agent, just, you know, refers to him as a traitor, but he'll be able to save his identity and be able to save the world too yeah. and the way the character really is is very cocky you know very uh, likable I mean you love the guy um, you care for him but you know he's, he's getting into massive trouble especially that he had a team up with a a scientist who just does all these weird gadgets like very strange gadgets like something that's not violent at all but it does distract them <laughs> very well like he doesn't want to hurt people at all because of what happened um, that's that's a very interesting take uh, anyway um, but it was hilarious uh, it was great I, I loved it um, and great cast right there I thought Will Smith did an excellent job doing the voice of of um, of Lance Sterling and same goes with Tom Holland as the voice of Walter Beckett and and you know what 
as a team. I mean, even if they didn't get along at first, or how it turned out, but in the end, they learned something, so they, so it turned out for the best for them. <laughs> and together, I thought they worked um, excellent. And it's true, it's more important, you know, working as a team rather than being alone, you know, going solo. But, hey, I, I know, I mean, imagine if James Bond had to work as a team. <laughs> I think that would work too, but who knows. Um, as for the other uh, cast, uh, Rochelle Jones as Marcy. Yeah, I mean, if... I mean, you kind of get turned off at first uh, for the character. Like, you're thinking, you know... You know how... You know, you probably wouldn't like her at first, but then next thing you know, you, you'll be able to like her even more when... Once um, you get to at the end, so. But of course, because she's the one that's going after Sterling. Um, but also joining in with um, with eyes and ears, um, you know, both played by Karen Gillian and T.J. Uh, Collies. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the moments too. Was that when when they went to um, all these locations too, uh, such as the Playa de Carmen the Resort. Was when they're trying to escape from from Marcy um, and the rest of the uh, the agency um, when they were chasing them down. Yeah, they had to use all the gadgets, uh, such as the the bubblegum gadget, which I thought that was pretty clever. Because um, of course they're being chased down, you know, by by them and also of course the, the villain, the Killian. And, <laughs> and the fact they got stuck too, I thought that was pretty funny. Or, or the times you know when Walter didn't know how to <laughs> how to do pulp core, and yeah, you, know, you had you know during the elevator scene, you know they were about to jump out from one building to the other. Um, of course, I know Sterling was just having trouble too because you know he can't fly yet; he doesn't know how. Um, so he he gets the help with all the other pigeons joining in, and I know he was trying to um, go inside you know, in, into the hotel, but he was having trouble because yes, uh, he was trying to get uh, the card, and so he got uh, knocked over by a patron, by what yeah, which he just whacks him with the the laptop. <laughs> And and not not only that, but the uh, the female pigeon, of course, um, you know, where says Walter assistant just wouldn't stop. Kit <laughs> just keeps falling in love with Sterling a lot. Just wouldn't let go. And the uh, other pigeon joins in. So <laughs> I mean, I mean, I I know. And then there's another one too. Just it's funny. It really is. Um, and Ben Mendelsohn definitely played a very nasty villain. I mean, you wanted to hate this character so much, especially when you find out the true secrets of his character. I mean, but you know exactly what he wanted. You know, his revenge against what, what his agency did to his uh, people and, and all, all of his uh, followers. Um, a lot of memorable f scenes here and there. I mean... Also heartwarming at times, and it worked. And of course, with all the other gadgets that Walter came up with, the glitter, showing all these uh, kitty videos, or or any of the other <laughs> strange gadgets that he chose, uh, even the unicorn. Yeah, it's obviously you know this guy is like, yeah, he, he's like a a peaceful hipster in a way. <laughs> But, hey, it's fun. Um, nice soundtrack, too. I mean, just a mixture of, of basically hip-hop and stuff. Yeah, I, I guess a bit of techno in there, too. Um, but, hey, you know, I, it, it was a big surprise. I, I really enjoyed it. So, I'm just glad to hear that Will Smith finally got to do a good movie uh, after the last two films he did um, that year. And teaming up with Tom Holland really worked. So, uh, of course, the score 
And of course, the score done by Fyodor Shapiro. Yeah, some nice uh, uh, James Bond like theme that they put into it. Like recent uh, Fox releases, you know, basically taking a hand of what Disney's been doing 10 years ago. This suffers uh, from schedule delays. It was supposed to come out, get this, January 18, 2019. So this would have been a year ago. But then they delay it to the spring release of April 19. And then all of a sudden, September 13. Till finally, it got a Christmas release date. Hoping this will work for the holiday season. And it does, actually. Because, why not? Because that's where all family films go to. So that way people have time to see other movies uh, beforehand. You know? Before we get to the new year. And, and yes, they actually um, played the film, hard to believe, the first uh, Blue Sky film to be played at the El Capitan Theater in Hollywood. And that's the place where they usually play Disney films, which is operated by Pacific Theaters. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought that a Fox movie would be played over there? Usually Fox films would be played in, in several theaters like at this rate, the, the Grumman's Chinese Theater, or the Arc Lights. So th this is the first time. Yeah, it's really weird. So far, it's um, making uh, ninety, like over ninety million dollars worldwide uh, out of its hundred million dollar budget. I hope it continues to make more profit. Maybe it'll do even better box office wise. Um, but it's a fun movie. I can, I highly recommend checking this out. So, anyway, I, I give Spies in Disguise uh, five stars. Why not? <laughs> I, I I really enjoy it. And I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.